This is the Music History Today podcast for March 7th. On today's show, jazz gets its first singles, the Beastie Boys and New Order make history, and both a David Bowie album and an Oscar-winning music movie make their debuts. First up, though, on this date in 1939, Guy Lombardo and his orchestra recorded the New Year's Eve classic, Auld Lang Syne. In 1955, NBC Television broadcasted the Broadway musical Peter Pan, which had a then-record 65 million people watching the broadcast. In 1962, the Beatles went on the BBC radio show Teenagers Turn Here We Go, which was the first time one of their live performances was ever recorded. In 1963, John Coltrane and Johnny Hartman recorded their landmark album, John Coltrane and Johnny Hartman. In 1966, Tina Turner recorded her part for the Ike and Tina Turner song, River Deep, Mountain High. In 1967, Bobby Darin and Sandra D. divorced. In 1968, Elvis Presley recorded the song, A Little Less Conversation, A Little More Action. In 1980, the Loretta Lynn biopic Coal Miner's Daughter, which won a few Academy Awards, especially for acting, premiered in movie theaters. Sissy Spacek won Best Actress, I believe, on that one. In 1986, the movie Highlander, with the cult classic soundtrack from Queen, premiered in movie theaters. In 1987, the Beastie Boys performed on Soul Train. On the same day, their album, Licensed to Ill, became the first rap album to hit number one on the American Albums charts. In 1994, the United States Supreme Court ruled that the two live crews parody version of Roy Orbison's Oh Pretty Woman was actually legal and that parody songs are covered by fair use. In 1997, Darlene Love won her lawsuit against Phil Spector's record label Phillies Records for unpaid royalties. In 2001, Casey and JoJo were sued for copyright infringement over their song Just For Your Love. Also in 2001, Jerry Collins of the Tramps was convicted of the attempted murder of his wife. In 2007, Claudia Lett of Babadu Nova fame married Marcio Pedrera. And in 2015, due to a change in the way charting companies counted singles, sales, streams, and airplay, Drake had 14 songs on the Top 100 Singles Chart, tying the Beatles record of 14 songs in April of 1964. In classical music, in 1824, the Giacomo Meyerbeer opera The Crusader in Egypt opened in Venice, Italy. And in 1896, the Gilbert and Sullivan comic opera The Grand Duke opened in London, England. In theater, in 1918, the musical Oh Look opened on Broadway. In 1946, the musical Three to Make Ready opened on Broadway. In 1959, the musical Bells Are Ringing closed on Broadway, and in 1966, the musical Wait a Minute opened on Broadway. In award ceremonies that were held on March 7th in 1979, Olivia Newton-John won at the People's Choice Awards. In 1987, Carole King and Jerry Goffin were inducted into the Songwriters Hall of Fame. And in 1997, Babyface won Entertainer of the Year at the Soul Train Music Awards. Albums that were released in the UK on March 7th include in 2005, when Tears for Fears released Everybody Loves a Happy Ending. Meanwhile in America, in 1969, Genesis released From Genesis to Revelation. In 1970, Mountain released Climbing. In 1973, The Birds released Birds. In 1975, David Bowie released Young Americans and The Carpenters released The Carpenters Live in Japan. In 1983, Tears for Fears released The Hurting and Bananarama released their debut album Deep Sea Skiving. In 1986, Chris Rea released On the Beach. In 1987, The Beatles started releasing their catalog on CD. In 1988, The Beatles did a twofer. They released Past Masters Volume 1 and Past Masters Volume 2. 
1994, Aphex Twin released Selected Ambient Works Volume 2. In 1995, Eric Clapton released The Cream of Eric Clapton. In 1997, Human Nature released Telling Everybody. In 2000, The Beat Stakes released Launched. In 2005, Ben E. King released Soul Masters. In 2006, The Buzzcocks released Flat Pack Philosophy. Donald Fagan released Morph the Cat. Jethro Tull released Aqualung Live. And Van Morrison released Pay the Devil. Singles that were released in the UK on March 7th include in 1966 when The Who released The Legal Matter. In 1969, The Small Faces released After Glow of Your Love, and in 1981, Phil Collins released I Missed Again. Meanwhile, in America, in 1917, the Victor Talking Machine Company released the first jazz records, the original Dixieland jazz band songs Dixie Jazz Band One Step and Livery Stable Blues. The songs were recorded only a week earlier on February 26th. In 1966, Brian Wilson released Caroline No. In 1969, The Hollies released Sorry Suzanne. In 1970, Melanie released Lay Down Candles in the Rain. In 1972, Styx released Best Thing. Roberta Flack released The First Time Ever I Saw Your Face, which won the Grammy Award for Song of the Year. Also, The Hollies released The Baby in 1972. In 1983, New Order released the biggest-selling 12-inch single of all time, Blue Monday. In 1985, USA for Africa released We Are the World. In 1995, Madonna released One More Chance. And in 2019, Ava Max released So Am I. Before we go any further, we'd like to tell you that there is now a Music History In-Depth podcast where we go more in-depth on a few of the events that happen in music history for that particular week. The Music History In-Depth podcast runs every Tuesday on YouTube or wherever you get your podcast from, as does our Music Halls of Fame podcast, which talks about a member of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame along with other Music Halls of Fame, museums, and walks of fame. The Music Halls of Fame podcast drops every Thursday and can also be found on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. Now, back to this podcast. Artists who were born on March 7th include composer Maurice Ravel, Malin Clark of the Lawrence Welk Orchestra, drummer Hamilton Bohannon, singer-songwriter Towns Van Zant, Peter Wolf of the Jay Giles Band, Matthew Fisher of Procol Harum, Ernie Isley of the Isley Brothers, Singer Taylor Dane, Randy Gus of Toad the Wet Sprocket, Matt Frenette of Loverboy, Arthur Lee of Love, Singer Leon Silvers III, Bassoonist Frank Morelli, Kelly Young of Liberty X, Paul Cattermole of S Club 7, Paul Davis of The Happy Mondays, Singer Peggy March, Bassist Herb Bushler, Trombonist Roy Williams, Drummer Adrian McIntosh, French trumpet player Jean-Claude Naud, Jane Rafe of Renaissance, Rocco Prestia of Tower of Power, drummer Kenny Aronoff of John Mellencamp's backup band, singer and actress Donna Murphy, singer Aaron Diaz, musician Arthur Lee, musician Warrell Dane, singer-songwriter Amanda Somerville, rapper Chris Calico, rapper Supa Peach, singer Eleni Foriera and guitarist Ayla Tesler Maybe. Artists who unfortunately passed away on March 7th include composer Antonio Pelea, who passed away in 1761 at the age of 68. Violinist Frantesic Benda passed away in 1786 at the age of 76. Composer Johann Witthauer passed away in 1802 at the age of 50. Composer Johann Albrechtberger passed away in 1809 at the age of 73. Composer Christian Weinleg passed away in 1842 at the age of 61. Pianist Victor Duvenoy passed away in 1907 at the age of 64. Songwriter Lena Ford passed away in 1918 at the age of 48. 
pianist Heinrich Kahn Albest passed away in 1926 at the age of 73. Composer Amadeo Roldan passed away in 1939 at the age of 38. Musicologist Arnold Schering passed away in 1941 at the age of 63. Violinist Alma Moody passed away in 1943 at the age of 44. Musician Mike Millward of the group The Foremost passed away from leukemia in 1966 at the age of 23. Saxophonist Willie Smith passed away in 1967 at the age of 56. Calypso and jazz saxophonist Harold McNair passed away from lung cancer in 1971 at the age of 39. Singer and actor Alberto Rabagliati passed away in 1974 at the age of 67. Composer Erwin Kroll passed away in 1976 at the age of 90. Concert pianist Guillermo Nové passed away in 1979 at the age of 84. Composer Klaus Egge passed away in 1979 at the age of 72. The conductor for the Bolshoi Theater from 1943 to 1956, also the Moscow Philharmonic from 1960 to 1975, the Concert Begau from 1978 to 1981, Kirill Kondrashin passed away in 1981 at the age of 67. Composer Charles Mills passed away in 1982 at the age of 68. Composer and conductor Igor Markovich passed away in 1983 at the age of 70. The conductor of the Chicago Symphony from 1950 to 1956 and also the Metropolitan Opera from 1958 to 1969, George Schick passed away in 1985 at the age of 76. Composer Arnold Franchetti passed away in 1993 at the age of 84. Singer and actor Earl Wrightson passed away in 1993 at the age of 77. Organist and composer John Lambert passed away in 1995 at the age of 69. Opera singer for the Vienna State Opera from 1954 to 1996, also the Metropolitan Opera from 1959 to 1996. Leone Reisenek passed away in 1998 at the age of 71. Blues guitarist and songwriter Lowell Fulson passed away in 1999 at the age of 77. Marv Ingram of the Four Preps passed away in 1999 at the age of 60. The first African-American woman to conduct symphony orchestras in 16 different cities, including Chicago and Los Angeles. Margaret Rosazarian passed away from heart issues in 2000 at the age of 56. Country music singer and accordionist Pee Wee King passed away in 2000 at the age of 84. Pianist Frankie Carl passed away in 2001 at the age of 97. Album music cover artist Abdul Mati passed away in 2002 at the age of 69. Singer Jimmy Boyd passed away in 2009 at the age of 70. Singer Jimmy Ellis passed away in 2012 at the age of 74. Guitarist and singer-songwriter Peter Banks, who is also known as the architect of Prague rock music, Passed away in 2013 at the age of 65 from heart issues. Country music singer Cloud King passed away in 2013 at the age of 90. Jazz musician Kenny Ball passed away in 2013 at the age of 82. Composer Penty Ratio passed away in 2014 at the age of 83. Composer Francis Thorne passed away in 2017 at the age of 94. One of the pioneers of the album cover art, Gary Burden, passed away in 2018 at the age of 84. Pianist Dmitry Bashkirov passed away in 2021 at the age of 89 and music video director and documentary filmmaker of the movie Standing in the Shadows of Motown, 
Paul Justman passed away in 2023 at the age of 74. Next on the Music History Today podcast, it is March 8th, when in 1994, two of the albums that helped set the sound of the 1990s were released, Soundgarden Super Unknown and Nine Inch Nails' Downward Spiral. 